Cooler Master's Master Key Pro series of keyboards offer 16.7 million color RGB, genuine cherry switches, a variety of sizes as well as surface mounted controls allowing full customization without the need for standalone software. Learn more by following the link down below. You guys, you guys like my plant? I call him Planty. What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and since moving into this studio, one of the most common questions I've been asked is about this desk, or this platform, or this thing I'm doing reviews on, because you guys are very interested in it because it goes up and down. Well, this guys is the autonomous sit-stand desk. Probably one of the more affordable sit-stands that you can get on the market because they, keep, they can run into the thousands of dollars depending on the brands that you go with. But what really got my attention with this one here is the fact that the giant table surface that you see here, a 70 inch wide table sur surface is only $549 for the upgraded model. Now because I wanted a big surface to use here for while I do my reviews like for systems and cases and even small product B-roll, uh, obviously I'm standing at the desk, you guys have seen that in the past. I went with the largest one they have. This is actually 70 inches by 30 inches and it's pretty big, so you could even use a multi-panel setup on this desk and still have room for your tower up here. I do wish it was a little bit deeper, uh, but 30 inches is decent. I think 40 inches would have been perfect. Uh, but the cool thing about the frame on this is you can actually buy the frame independently and use your own tabletop. So you could use a countertop, cut your own piece of wood, whatever you want, and actually mount that to the frame. So you don't actually have to use the tabletops that come from Autonomous. Now just like other desks in this price range, namely Ikea, it does come in different finishes. I obviously chose the white. I felt it was a little bit more neutral, but you can get it in different shapes as well. So if you want a curved desk that you can get closer to, uh, you can do that. I chose, obviously, as I said, the 70 by 30 large tabletop here. Now it has these pass-throughs on here also that are perfect for if you're gonna go with your monitors and your tower on the desk, then you can just pass the cables through, uh, which is very nice. So you don't have cables that are draping back behind uh, the, the desk. And if you've got it up against the wall, it means you can get it close to the wall without having your cables start to rub, especially as the desk is going up and down. Now the frame on this desk, this is the business edition, so it can hold a lot more weight. In fact, 300 pounds is what they advertise the weight limit as being. Something else really neat about this desk though is as it's going up and down, it's got cable management in mind, which is very important because you don't want those cables to get snagged on anything. Uh, so they do actually have pre-drilled locations for you to mount underneath the power supply for obviously the, the motors. The business edition has two motors, the standard edition has one. Uh, it's also got pre-drilled holes for the control box on there. And it also includes these adhesive reusable cable straps so you can keep everything up there nice and tidy. Most desks you're kind of left to just figure out what to do with the cables. Autonomous has actually thought about that which is very nice to see. Now not only is this desk manually adjustable, it also has four presets in there that you can save at different levels. So if you just wanna walk up to it and know I wanna stand, you could save that to preset number four. It goes to the predetermined height that you set and off you go. You don't have to manually, manually adjust it. Maybe you've got more than one person using this desk. Uh, you can So you can have multiple settings on that, which is actually kind of neat. This particular one is not actually used as a workspace, but the one upstairs I've got for the test bench, which is a smaller version of the same desk, a little bit shorter, it's a 50 inch version. Uh, it's actually pretty nice to be able to adjust it up and down. Uh, when I'm doing a lot of my test bench stuff, I'm kind of up and moving around while the bench marks are running, so I hate having to sit down, do the thing, stand up, sit down. So it's actually very convenient to have a desk that I can set at a stand height, but if uh, Nick wants to play games or I want to play games, we've done some co-op stuff in here since we moved in, it, you can just move it right back down to a sitting height and off you go. But the most impressive part about this desk is its price point. Now $549 for what you see right here, and this is pretty much the most expensive outfitted edition that they have. It's got the upgraded base, it's got a higher weight limit, it's got the larger platform on top, uh, it's 549 bucks, which I know sounds like a lot of money, but it's actually a bit of a steal when you compare it to some of the other brands out there and you see just how many zeros can be tacked on to the price of a desk like this. Now in terms of stability, once we put it all the way to its max height, the higher something gets, a little bit more unstable it could be. And although it does look like it's kind of wobbling around a little bit right now, it does have adjustable feet on the bottom. I'm actually a little bit lazy and I haven't done that yet because I'm on a concrete floor 
and it's not the most even of floors, and I'm moving this desk around all the time, so that's why I haven't really adjusted those legs. But they do have adjustable feet to make it as stable as possible. I have the utmost faith in this thing, though, to be able to put systems on top of here when I'm doing reviews and not worry about it toppling over. Uh, the T legs on here are very heavy duty, very robust. The motors are built into the legs, uh, and they actually collapse into themselves, so you have very little moving parts for things to get snagged on. It's overall a very well thought out design. If I had any complaints, honestly, because nothing is perfect, it would be that the pass through, uh, we'll call them grommets even though they're metal, they don't fit in there as snug as I wish that they did. So as I'm pu pushing cables through and pulling cables out, it tends to pull the whole thing out of the desk. So I wish there was a little bit better tolerance on those, uh, but that's a very minor thing. Once the cables are run, you're not messing with it usually, and so you're not gonna be having those things pop out very often. The other thing I think would have been a nice option is to get the tabletop without those holes drilled uh, if you didn't want to have the cables pass through the tabletop. I actually requested that from them. They told me that it's not available. This is the only way it ships. But if that's not your thing, you can actually buy the frame independently and put your own tabletop on there. So you could run down to Ikea or wood, uh, a wood shop or whatever and get your own tabletop made in any size you want. Uh, I might actually end up doing that so I can get a little bit deeper surface. Uh, that's available too. I mean, the, the, they're just holes on the bottom of the frame that you can put any wood screw through, as long as it's not too long and pokes through your, your surface, then you can change out the top. Don't have to buy that at all, which makes the price even cheaper to get just the frame. So that's always an option as well. Now, something else I've actually been asked about too are the chairs that I'm using, because you guys have noticed I didn't put any DX Racer chairs or any of those racing simulator chairs in here. We went with real ergonomic chairs, again by Autonomous. They are the Ergo chair, and they've got a bajillion adjustments on there and they're extremely comfortable and I felt they warranted their own review so I'm gonna do it separate from this one, but I'm sick of the whole racing chair concept, the whole racing chair scene. I'm, I'm, I'm done with that and I'm a car guy, so what does that tell you? That tells you that it's just been played out. When a car guy is telling you he doesn't wanna sit in a racing chair because he's just sick of it. They're not the most comfortable thing to sit in long term or long, long durations, so the Ergo chair um, will we'll definitely be something we're doing in the future. So anyway, if you guys wanna learn more about this desk, head to the description. There is a link down there. Again, there's no affiliates or kickbacks or anything. I just wanted to share it with you guys. So that's it guys, time to go. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to take a look at when it comes to like setups and maybe I'll, I'll get it in here and we'll take a look at it. Desks and chairs, man, they're huge. I mean, we all care about our towers and our monitors and stuff, but those all have to go on something. And if you love your tower and you love your monitor, but you hate your desk and your chair, the entire experience is gonna suck. So. Care about your setups, care about your desks. Do some leg work and technically do some leg work. You can do like squats or you got this guy. So yeah, in fact, I guess it's a good way to get out of here. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah, and make sure you hit like for, for Planty there. He's a star of the show. <laughs>